because people don't know who they are. So they latch on to labels. Yeah. I'm a traditional man. I'm a traditional woman. I'm a modern woman. I'm a modern man. I'm this, I'm that. I'm a high value man. I'm a high value woman. And, and all that does is it shows that you don't know who you are. Uh, because if you knew who you were, you wouldn't need to a- adopt a label that you didn't come up with, that you borrowed from somebody else that you heard somewhere on YouTube. <laughs> That's facts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Introspect Club, a club where you can learn a lot about yourself through conversations with other people. My name is Jeff Demise, and I'll be your host. Um, We're here to continue the conversation we've been having all week um, with the series regarding traditional and modern relationships. And I brought someone along to kind of expand the um, conversation in a different perspective from what you've been hearing before. Now, the topics that we were talking about previously was the concept of traditional relationships, you know, people who still want them or people who feel as though it's a more necessary way of, you know, procuring a relationship in today's environment. However, there's alternative frame of thoughts. There's um, perspectives that are a little bit more conducive to this current environment. And um, but it's still controversial to a lot of people. So I brought in someone who some might consider controversial in his frame of mind, but I call it different. I call it necessary. And sometimes uh, some people may or may not like it. But I want to introduce a very good friend of mine, Coach Justin from the Alpha Evolution. What's up, my man? How you doing, Jeff? Doing all right, man. It's good to be back on the show. I, w- I was hoping you'd be Even here though, in person. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not in your living room again. I'm that soft couch. Uh, first of all, that sounded kind of weird. Uh, that's uh, that's not a no, man. <laughs> that's a good couch. No, it is a good couch. Gonna- this couch. You know what's crazy? So like, I used like when I was uh, before I moved uh, to New York, I used to buy couches like on a you know on a guy guy budget. Where like ah, I just want a decent couch or whatever. And then I decided to go, you know, balls deep and like spend like some real money. Balls. And, <laughs> and I'm not going to say how much a couch costs, but I've had it for like eight or so years. Actually, no, like almost 10 years, this couch. Mm. And it's like spotless. And you you just, you know, watch You know what I hear consistently from women? What? That they completely despise leather couches. I don't care. But but guys love them. Yeah, it's really strange. Well, here's what I'll say about leather couches, right? Maybe maybe this is why it's a guy thing, right? Mm. I like the durability of it, right? And two, it's yeah. like it's easy to remove stains for me. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna I'm not talking about what kind of stains. Hey, 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 uh, hey, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just really simple, and then you just condition it and things like that. And when I have cleaners come, it's not a big deal. But that's that's how that's how I look to look at it. But anyway, give everybody a quick introduction of who you are, what you're about, and um, so everybody can get familiar. Yeah, man. Uh, well, if if no one has has seen the previous episode, I'll just start from the top. My name is Coach Justin. I run a program for men called the Alpha Evolution, where I focus on uh, dating, relationships, and sex education, uh, trying to get the best out of men and help deal with their social conditioning to get to a better and more genuine, authentic presence of themselves so that they can present themselves properly to women and uh, have better influence uh, over the women that are in their lives. Right on. That's a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's a very necessary thing for especially men um, who I think have struggled for quite some time in uh, modern environments where they might not know what to do for multiple reasons. And I think you're one of the people who are providing services to help men 
achieve their, I guess, romantic goals and probably also lifestyle goals um, because yep. there's not always the best examples for a lot of men. I've recognized that. And sometimes it's for different reasons. But one of the things that I wanted to address on this particular conversation is I've had quite a few exchanges with people regarding traditional relationships. What is your understanding of traditional relationships? Uh, traditional relationships, uh, they have a structure. And the, the problem is, is that people think that's what a traditional relationship is, that it's, that it's, that it's definition comes from its structure. Okay. And that's not the case. Okay. The structure is an expression or a result of having a traditional mindset, which is a result of having generations of a traditional mindset. Okay. Right. So, so it's something that's developed over time through seeing examples of children, seeing exa examples from their parents and from their parents and so on and so on and so on. And uh, then they just, that's just how they think. That's just how they operate in relationships. And from the outside, people go, oh, you've got a traditional relationship. But if from their reality, they're just like, hey, this is just, this is how I see family. This is how I see upbringing. I don't see any other alternative. This is just what it is. And, um, and then, but people from the outside who don't have that, they look at this and go, oh, I want that. And they only see the external expressions. Uh, they only see the external structures yeah. and they say, well, I can copy that. And they put on the cosplay outfit and say, now I'm traditional. And it's like, no, no, it doesn't work like that. So what, so what are some of the things? <laughs> wait, so that's interesting you say that because I've actually never, you're actually the first person that kind of like explained it this way. Um, the aspect of like seeing the external, well, the first person you know, that I've had exchanges with to explain it this way. I don't want to make it seem like everything is a complete original thought, but like, give me some ideas of, of like what external things that you feel a lot of men want out of traditional relationships and what kind of external things women want from traditional relationships. That's a good question. And I would say from the things that they've observed, okay. they, they say, well, uh, the man is the head of the home. Who's saying that? The like, men or women? Uh, this is just things that I've heard, okay. both from men and women. Like a man will say this and a woman will say this. Okay. Like those who are interested in the image of a traditional relationship or the functions of a traditional relationship. There's those traditional roles where the man is a provider. The man is a protector uh, and the woman is the nurturer and she's the grower of the home. Got it. And, uh, and those are, that's just like the basic, um, more callous categories. Um, there's other finer dynamics about how they go through conflict resolution okay. and things of that nature. The real nitty gritty of the relationship, that's the part that's missing because that's the stuff that you learn as you grow up. You learn how to behave by seeing examples. You learn how to resolve conflict by seeing examples, by someone sitting you down and teaching you and saying, hey, this is how you deal with emotions. This is how you deal with a, a certain situation. This is how you deal with responsibility. This is how you deal with a woman in your life. This is how you deal with a man in your life. And, um, and it's, it's straight up taught to individuals. Like the, the, and it's expected but, almost. But, but, let's, but I want to focus on like the, the external things that people want to mirror. So one thing you're sure. saying that I guess men and women want to mirror is the leadership aspect. So you think men, women are seeking to be led by men in, in, in these traditional relationships. <laughs> that's a tricky question. Well, that's what I'm it's trying a, to understand. It's a funny question. Do they desire to be led? No, I think, um, well, yes and no, it's a, it is tricky because you said both answers in is. one response. Yes, right. So, all right. So, yes, but I don't think women understand what that means for them. Okay. And I don't think men understand what it means for them to, to be a leader, okay. to have someone who looks to you as a follower, as a guide. I don't think they understand what that means. They just look at the surface and go, oh, that looks really cool. That looks empowering. That looks fun. That looks desirable, whatever it is. And they say, I want that. Yeah. Um, and because come, what comes with it is a great feeling of respect, of honoring, of uh, reverence. And the, the funny part is, 
is that people who think this way believe that it comes from fitting into a role and they got it backwards. The role is born of the characteristics of the individuals. It's not something that is sought out. So you don't join the role and then your characteristics catch up. You have the characteristics and the role is created by proxy. Okay. So you're saying that because I think we're mixing two things at the same time, and I want to kind of compartmentalize it so I can make sure everybody sure. understands the question I'm asking. Mm -hmm. So let's focus mainly on, let's say, the men. What are some right. of the external things that they want out of traditional relationships? Uh, let, let's even make it small. Like, what do they expect of women sure. in traditional relationships? Sure. So uh, the stupid shit that I've heard, stupid stuff that I've heard on um, – you know, clubhouse and you hear the cooking and cleaning. <laughs> and sadly, I've not heard much more than that. Uh -huh. That's that's yeah. That's the extent of what I've heard. Huh. Um, I've heard about wanting respect, okay. um, wanting someone who's not argumentative or challenging. Okay. And, um, and that's, that's all fine and good. Right. Um, I don't think anybody wants a challenging and argumentative person, right. like maybe a small percentage, but the vast majority of people, I don't think want that in a partner. Uh, but the guys, you, I think the, the list is very short because they've never experienced it before. Mm. So they only go off of like what they could possibly think of, or sadly, what they hear other people say. And the other people are saying the same shit. So that's why the list is so very short. And it's always just like cooking and cleaning taking care of the kids, keeping the house, you know, orderly. And, um, and it really goes a lot deeper than that into, you know, behaviors into psychology and things of that nature. And, uh, but if you've never experienced it before, all you see or hear of are these just very few examples. And you say, okay, that's what I want. That's what I expect when you don't really understand how to get that, because then that calls into question who you are. And what do you think women are looking at externally in traditional relationships that they want to mirror in their lives? The, oh, for their own behavior? No. Or, or for, for guys? I mean, like what, what whatever, are, what it, is that, whatever it is they're looking for to gain in a traditional relationship. Oh, uh, I, think, I think it's the same root, right? So the same root it would be a feeling of security. Right. I think that is within all women who are seeking relationships. They want an emotional feeling of security. And uh, there's a big misunderstanding that that comes from money. And it, mm. it really, it's, it can, like that absolutely helps, but it comes from who, sh who he is, who the guy is, and how he makes her feel when she's in his presence. Mm -hmm. And if she does not feel safe just by his presence alone, then there's, there's going to be problems, mm. right? Um, and then that is often masked by money. And we see that all the time where like there's a guy who has plenty of money to be a provider, to, to provide a, a logistical sense of security, but the emotional isn't there and he gets played. Hmm. And, you know, we've seen that multiple times in, with stories, uh, celebrities, things of that nature. I, I, um, I did I did notice that because I noticed that a lot of people who discuss being in traditional relationships, especially coming from women, is I think a lot of them are looking to be spoiled. Right? Yes. And mm -hmm. when you hear that a man's going to be the breadwinner, um, I think a lot of women who lean on that is they're looking for a man to not <clears throat> just take care of everything financially, but hopefully the finances mm -hmm. also takes care of everything on her end. Yeah. You hire, yeah, meaning I think like, it, I meaning think like because if, if he's wealthy enough to hire a chef, <laughs> wealthy enough to hire a, a, a house mm -hmm. cleaner, wealthy enough to, right. to, you know, to have daycare, wealthy enough to have like, you know, all her self care taken care of. Well, like all these things that will kind of pamper that lifestyle. And I think a lot of men, a nanny to raise the children. Exactly. And I think, Right. And I think a lot of men are seeking traditional relationships because they are looking for a rule to gain submiss submission from women. Yes. I wanted to I wanted to bring that up. And I'm glad that you did, uh, because many times if you 
can't get it organically, yeah. whatever it is that you're after, you got to get it right, religiously that comes through human behavior. <laughs> we seek to create structures yeah. by which to corral human behavior. Yes. Right. Yeah. And through fear of punishment, through, I mean, that's, that's how many laws are operated. Like we expect people to just be good, but our natures are a little bit um, unpredictable. Yeah. So we set up laws to say, okay, listen, we, we got to kind of force you to have a certain type of behavior that's like socially acceptable. Mm. And it's sort of like that where, where it's like, well, they can't get the submission based on who they are alone. So they're like, well, they'll announce to the world, say, all right, I'm a traditional man. And that means that I have authority just by simply being in the position of the man, according to the structure of that type of relationship dynamic. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that automatically puts her in a place of submission. Uh, and it's like, if you've never experienced submission from a woman before, you have no idea what you're getting into. You realize you won't know that that's not how it works. So you're saying <laughs> like, it's not, it's not an agreement that you sign. On yeah. A piece of paper. So basically they're, you're saying they're creating structure in these names and titles in order to yes. have the rewards of something that you would have had to earn through certain actions that you, you know, uh, subject yourself to in order to be able to earn, you know, that type of return in interaction. Right. Well, it, it's, it's, well, the earning comes from the self, right? Like that's, and then the female submission is not earned. It's just a happenstance result of, well, I so mean, it's not I mean, sought that's, after as a goal. It just so happens to be that thing. Well, I'm I'm saying it. I'm using the word earn, meaning like, right? You know, a guy who is truthfully acting within his masculine, right? Mm -hmm. The natural reaction to someone who is well receiving of that type of characteristic is mm -hmm. they're likely to submit to that level of masculinity. Correct. Right. Like I, I make a flower example, like the like certain flowers you have to pot it in the window when the sun comes out, they'll turn their face towards the sun. Sure. And like you don't have to rotate the pot like it'll do it on its own. Right. And that's largely how I treat women. Like I don't I don't seek out submission. It's just who I am. If I vibe with them. And right. They, I, I don't. It'll just happen. I'm not using the word yeah. earn in the sense of sought out. I'm saying earn yeah. meaning like the sun earned its uh, 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 ability to attract the flowers because it provides, you know, uh, uh, um, physical nutrient to the plant. So the plant right. naturally says, okay, you've earned my attention, son, because you yep. provide life to my existence in some capacity and vice versa, right. you know, for a, a man to want to be, you know, masculine and, and to uh, uh, exude himself in certain ways. Like some women can attract that based on how they position themselves, right? And you can call it earn or not, but the point is they they're also attracting a certain type of guy by yes. behaving in a certain way. Whether they're even if they're doing because that's how, who they naturally are, it's a level of attracting rather than a little level of demanding. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Well, and, and there's, and truthfully, guys have to learn how to sort this out, right? Because there's a lot of people who, uh, uh, women who will fake, like, okay, so I am part of like the BDSM lifestyle. And there's a phenomenon within that of fake doms and fake subs. Okay. Where you, they put on a certain role to get a certain something out of that person, depending on the, the, complexities of the dynamic and it happens in the vanilla world as well where people the will vanilla, put on a certain okay, face i need okay i need i need explanations you can't just be throwing words like that i know what the whole bdsm it, is but maybe you have to explain to the listeners who the, are okay people in the lifestyle consider uh people who are not in the lifestyle as vanilla so explain to everybody what the lifestyle is first and then explain the, the opposite. Okay. Well, I mean, the this, this show's not about BDSM, but but the um, the lifestyle, as it's referred to as people who are in and active uh, in the BDSM culture, that's just what we call it. We call it the lifestyle. Um, and so, and people who are not in the lifestyle, we refer to them as vanilla, much like in Harry Potter, they call non-magical people muggles. So it's, it's along those same lines. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So go ahead. So people... 
put on this act. Right. So I'm just saying the dynamic uh, occurs in the regular dating worlds, the non BDSM worlds, in just a not so amplified way. Okay. And uh, but it still exists. And so I've I've seen women put on a face. Of, uh, and this happened recently, actually, from a woman who approached me in Clubhouse. She expressed great interest in me and like right off the bat. And I'm like, OK, that's signal number one. OK, like you're coming on hard. And I'm like, OK, but you know what? Some women just can't help themselves. But I was like, OK, let me just see what's going on here. Let's let's just kind of put out a couple feelers here and there. And then I uh, through my testing, through my just a- asking certain questions, making certain requests, I got the the impression that she was putting on a show to get a person who's like me. And what was her and, what, what was her real personality? Um, I didn't get a, a full picture, but because I didn't, I cut it off right because I just I saw the uh, you know the wolf in sheep's clothing, and so I cut it off. But I got I got indications that what I was seeing was a bit of a show. And, to and what impress and, me to gain favor with me and uh, things of that nature. Yeah, but a lot of people do that, right? A lot of people do, mm-hmm. you know, try to put their best foot forward, whatever that version of themselves might might be, um, in order to right. win. You know, right? It's just how far off is the best foot from your genuine self? Sure. So, what's a version of that? <laughs> that what's a version of that for men? Uh, oh, this happens all the time. And again, like in the lifestyle, it's the fake doms um, and. There's fake men, right? Guys who who they have a hat on and it says man on the front of it, but really they're they're afflicted with nice guy syndrome. They're 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 pushovers, they're overly emotional, they're argumentative, they're violent, um, they're they're unreliable, they're undependable, they're not capable. Uh they're they're seeking out um to be domineering rather than dominating which are completely different um you know do- being being dominant comes from a mindset and an identity being domineering comes from a place of being uh overly emotional got it. and exerting will over another because you've got some emotional turmoil that you're trying to control within yourself so the the fakeness uh and women they've been duped but a lot of women who have you know been in the game they have some experience dating guys they know how to pick up on this stuff mm. and they, they can smell that dude from a mile away. And sometimes he'll get used and uh, other times he'll just get ghosted. It's funny you say that because a lot of these men will emulate what is the social norm or what they think the social norm is for a highly attractive man. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's this phrase going on, going around right now, which I'm going to give you spoiler alert. I, I intensively hate this phrase. <laughs> the HVM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know what HVM is, it's high value, man. Uh, I just vomit when I hear it. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> But that's me. I don't know what your thought process is in that, but like, give me an idea of like what your definition of a high value man is before we get into the discussion. It's nothing. It's nothing really. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's going to, it's a buzzword for right now. And it's going to be completely lost in the sea of cultural phrases that pop up. And no one's going to be mentioning that phrase in five years from now. No one. <laughs> it's just a trendy phrase for people to latch on to because people don't know who they are. So they latch on to labels. Yeah. I'm a traditional man. I'm a traditional woman. I'm a modern woman. I'm a modern man. I'm this. I'm that. I'm a high value man. I'm a high value woman. And, and all that does is it shows that you don't know who you are. Uh, because if you knew who you were, you wouldn't need to a- adopt a label that you didn't come up with, that you borrowed from somebody else that you heard somewhere on YouTube. <laughs> that's facts. Right? That's facts. Because I, that's why I'm never a big fan of like these very like, you know, 
uh, umbrella labels because it takes away from the individual. It takes away from like what makes you you because whatever you put in that label, somebody else might have a different definition of it. So you're you're associating yourself with like these words to say whatever you you think you want to say but someone might have a different meaning for it versus like how about you introduce yourself as self and whoever you are and just carry that with you until you you know you're in your grave so that way they remember you for who you are not by which labels you associated yourself with which is like could be completely right. misrepresentative of who you actually are yeah and what you mentioned was really good about uh you know after you're dead and after you're dead, people remember what impact you had right. on them. And your impact has nothing to do with this prescribed high value man label and what yeah. people think that means, right? Value, value is something that you can feel, right? It's like you, like who cares what the brand is? Like who cares how much, how much money it was? When you put on a pair of shoes that make your feet go, yeah, Ooh, that yeah. feels good, right? <laughs> it doesn't like you're you're saying these shoes have value, right? And it doesn't matter where you got them, how much they were, or what the brand is. You have now attached value to that because it makes you feel good. It's making an impression on you. Mm. And in the same way, the most valuable guy is the guy who is able to make impressions on people to leave lasting impressions that when you're around them, you feel good, mm. you feel inspired, you feel courageous, you feel better about yourself just by being around them and how they talk to you. Mm. It has nothing to do with his income, mm. right? If he's inspiring you to do better, mm. right? Um, if you're afraid of, of losing that relationship, Mm. because of the connection, mm. because the way he makes you feel about yourself, mm. that is value, mm. right? But it's like, ladies, are there men in your life having you feel this way? The numbers is uh, shockingly low. What are, you, what are you basing that off of? What do you mean? Talking to a number of women um, and, and men, right? Because the men are not having women around them, wanting to be around them. Right. And women are out here complaining. And, you know, you hear that phrase, we're the real men. Right. Who's the way what wait, they're talking wait, wait, you about? Said, where are the real men? Yes. You've heard that before. Yeah. 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 Right? I thought you were talking about the guys yeah. who were saying this. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. The, the, the guys are, are saying, are complaining that they can't get women around them to, to experience who they are or stay. Right. They'll just get ghosted or whatever after like a single date. And, uh, and the women are out here complaining that they don't, that the, where's the real men. And um, because it, it's not this, and the guys hear that and they think it's this external thing. They're like, oh man, I got to get my money up. Gotta I got to get, get my, my six pack. I, right. You know, I got to, <laughs> you like, I got to, got to beef up, change my wardrobe and get a better car. Uh, right. And yeah, those things are attractive, but it doesn't produce the feeling that she's after. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. When she says, where's the real men? She's talking about how she feels about herself while she's in the presence of a man. No, that's, and that's, that can't be bought. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this because although I agree with you that, you know, that feeling can't be bought. The idea that a woman can be, you know, thoroughly attracted to someone with or without like all this facade of like money mm -hmm. but we are having uh there's a social dynamic where a lot of what we do in life is dependent on money right yes. so money yep, we need it to survive right Absolutely. so money is the modern masculine muscle right for mm -hmm. our so well, you saw how bezos got played I, you know you hear me out <laughs> hear me out right Money is the modern uh, masculine muscle that replaced the actual muscle that was used to fight lions, tigers, and bears, right? For sure, yes. Yep. Those animals are in the zoo now, okay? Or they're in the wilderness far away from us. They would need to buy a flight to come to get us, okay? So now we have to uh, submit to the new challenges that we face, which is, okay, can you get your kids into uh, private school, <laughs> right? Can you, you know, pay your taxes? 
Can you, you know, uh, go on a nice vacation? So on and so forth. And all those are just very surface level things that are masking mm-hmm. the, the very breadth of like who you are as a man and as a woman. But you can't help but to deal with those things. And those mm-hmm. things become the forefront of a lot of people's minds, especially the women who are seeking for security. They're not seeking for security from, you know, even though subconsciously it happens in moments, but they're not thinking about like, I'm going to get this guy. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to settle with this guy because I know he can fight off other foe physically. He can, you know, uh, um, he has, you know, healthy genetics to bring the next, you know, generation of children and make them stronger and protect them and stuff like that. There's that on a subconscious level, but it's constantly being berated by the other commercialized needs which are really wants that people yeah. are now um really focusing on because they don't have the pressures of being chased by actual threats in the environment you see what i'm saying right it's yeah, the other yeah the tiger has turned into the irs exactly you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. so of course yes m- money is not i don't want to say money is like the the uh end all and be all and how to attract people and, and maintain certain relationships but it's a it's a large play into why people get divorced it's a Mm -hmm. it's a large play into what options you get in your life right not just in people but just in things right or or just uh uh, just amenities that you can afford yourself so my question to you is like how does today's man and today's woman navigate their subconscious desires around their social wants and needs that may contradict each other? Mm. Well, that can all be solved with men. Wait, hold up, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> what is that? Okay, all right. Listen, if you guys right, want so can- to, can- if you guys want to cancel me, feel free to cancel me today. No, I, I've, We're about to I've say got a colleague <laughs> that, no, I've got a colleague that says uh, it begins and ends with the men. Okay. Okay. It all starts with that. So, all right. A man is someone who knows himself through and through, all right, is constantly growing and has a square that he stands on. That square is developed on understanding and knowing and developing his codes, principles, and rules that he holds himself to. Got it. Okay. Then that extends to whoever comes into his field. Right, because basically he's creating this land, and he's a uh, a resident of that land, right? Internally, and he has to abide by those rules okay. and the structure, right? Mm-hmm. So anyone else who comes into that land also has to abide by the same the same behaviors, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And so so that is what allows for for good leadership, all right? That's when if she were to come in, based on how he is. Okay, because it's not like every wealthy guy and truth be told, wealthy guys that I would say for the most part aren't out here spending. (laughs) They're not out here driving fancy cars. Right. They're not out here glow trotting like crazy. That's a very small portion of wealthy people. I would say the vast majority of wealthy people hold on to their money. Yeah. And they live frugally. Right. They only buy what they need. Not they don't let their impulses and their wants go all over the place because they realize that's not how you create wealth. Right, 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 <laughs> you right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's how yeah, that's how, how you create money that grows more money. Right. You don't right. do that by spending it like flippantly. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. So the vast majority of wealthy people are actually very conservative about their money. They're not flashy at all. You don't even see them on the street, right? Well, it depends. That's a person who lives by principles. So if the woman comes into his field and he has a certain set of principles, that changes how she is allowed to behave. Do you see what I'm saying? And that will change her wants. Like she will have this want, like, oh, I want the, you know, the vacations all the time, doing this, that, and the other. I want to go shopping and do all this. And he's like, well, yeah, I have that capacity, but over here, we don't operate like that. And if he's solid in who he is, like I mentioned before, this the square, the standing on his codes, principles, and rules, he is a solid dude. He's not swayed by her looks. He's not swayed by her ass or her body or whatever. You know, it's it's irrelevant at that point, right? 
It's like, can you play? Because I'm playing, can you play? And it's like, if you want to get with somebody who's like me that can make you feel the way you want to feel, then let's let's go. Yeah, but and it's like those outside things get challenged and they can be done away with. Yeah, but you're you're kind of mixing two individuals, I, I think, right? Because you're talking mm-hmm. about the guys who use their natural, you know, uh, um, principles and 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 um, personalities and masculinity to attract women. And you're separating it from the guys who use their money to attract women, right? I happen to think that a lot of the guys who have a lot of wealth mm. aren't necessarily spending a lot of time attracting women. No, I mean, it just so happens to be attractive. I, I mean, I, these these outside things just so happen to be attractive. I'm saying the out the guys, mm. the guys that are flashing it might be yeah. spending time attracting women. The guys yes. that aren't who are focused on the principles and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. they're kind of like flying below the radar. And a lot of them are probably married with kids, you know, yeah. and they're they're raising a family. So they don't even they're not really in the field of this dynamic other than the ones within their their families. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. that to me is kind of like it's hard to compare the two because they're they're living two different lives. You see what I'm saying? Versus the person that's like constantly attracting attention or somebody that got his wealth from celebrity ism, however you want to look at it. So it's just, Mm -hmm. it's just two different worlds, but I'm concerned about like the idea that like you could want something that you're taught to want versus, Mm -hmm. and then it's a contradictory to what you naturally want. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When you have codes, principles, and rules that you hold to yourself, Mm -hmm. that in turn changes her perceived and learned and conditioned wants mm-hmm. that can influence her. Mm. Right and now you can't just, it, there's, there's a lot more to influencing a woman. Right. But that's one of them. That's like a, 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 a keystone in that, right. In that dynamic, those things where you say, well, I learned that you should like do this, or I want this or whatever, just by watching certain media or reading certain uh, material or whatever those beliefs get challenged. A lot of things get challenged. Um, and depending on, you know, her desire to be with this person who makes her feel a certain way, all sorts of things get dropped. Um, you know, so one of the things, one of the things I'm thinking about when, when I, when I hear these things, or when mm-hmm. we're discussing things like this is when we're talking about, let's say, you know, men's rights versus feminism and so on and, and, and so forth. A lot of a lot of the discussion are based on things that we've been socialized to accept in our modern environment, mm-hmm. right? And it comes in duality with what we physiologically are drawn to. Okay, so yeah, very much so. So, so if you're looking at the realm of like people who are looking for some form of equality and equity in. Well, some equality and equity is not necessarily the same thing, but like who's looking for some type of equality in their relationships. Is that contradictory to what physiologically they're going to desire? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's a big problem when it comes to your social conditioning and spending many years listening to outside messages uh, and that sort of influence, um, and I and I say many times that the most dangerous person on the planet is a healthy, free-thinking man, because he has done away with his social conditioning, and he raises himself from himself. Right? He uses himself as his own mental point of origin. Um, and, you know, I'm not a, a red pillar, but, you know, that was a, a line from Rolo Tomasi that I thought was very, very poignant. Mm. Um, and, and you can't be your own mental point of origin until you do away and challenge the conditioning that you've had. And that's stuff from your parents, that's stuff from your community, that's from your religion, from the government and all that stuff. And it's like, once you get past all that and then start reformulating from inside, right, that's you know, because you were born with everything that you need as a man, right? Mm. You're not like, like God didn't make a mistake. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So it's like, everything's there and that can absolutely be challenged. Like you can challenge those things. Mm. 
So, so is it natural for like men to pursue like the social concept of relationships that eventually lead to marriage and and things like that? Is it like reasonable to expect it to work? If you're saying uh, the most, oh, you're asking, are you asking like is marriage a social construct or is that natural? No, I, I mean I already have my own answer to that, but like. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking at it from the sense of you're saying like it's almost like you're describing the most potent or the most dangerous version of man, which sounds like a desire for a lot of mm-hmm. men. It's, that sounds desirable to like, you know, go to that well, sure down mm-hmm. you know your own path and like not have to deal with all these rules and and so on and so forth. Is that like the natural draw for for most men? Like that's what they that's what they desire for themselves, or that's what you think is like ideal? Uh uh, and well, no, I think honestly, I think just think because most men are just so screwed up that they're really just after box. I, I got you, but take the screw, take the, <laughs> you know what I'm take, saying? like they just want validation from women. I got you, but take the screwed up yeah. part aside. Would you say a healthier version of a man is a man that creates mm-hmm. his own rules, follows his own path and lives by his own principles? Yes. Okay. I mean, barring like, you know, rules of the uh, rules of the, of the state. I mean, you can't change this. You have to, if you're a citizen in a place, you have to follow certain rules, right. but when it comes to social rules, yes. Right. So there are social rules that, that, you know, coincide with relationships, right? Be, building relationships with people and those social rules, not legal rules, right? Unless you mm-hmm. choose to in, to embark in, in making things legal in your relationship, do you feel as though that type of guy that you're referring to, that is like, you know, the, the most dangerous version of a man, which is a probably a desirable version of a man that men want to be, you know, marching down your own path. Do you feel like that can work in an environment where you have to be a little bit more, um, acquiescent to like social cooperative cooperation you know Mm -hmm. uh and then enter into like certain constructs like marriage or expectations and relationships would that work today or would we just be neanderthal that's just running around doing whatever we want and there's going to be no advancement in how our community moves because there's no cooperation in on our end how do you feel that would, well, the, that would well, go. Ne- well, Neanderthal just is, is based off impulse. Sure. I'm not talking about impulse, right? Okay. I'm talking about calculated based on a set of beliefs, Okay. right? That you've come up with on your own, um, based on a set of principles that you've come up on your on your own and uh, and holding true to them, mm. right? And, uh, and, you know, people would say, well, that's basically what religions are trying to do. Right. You look at the, the, the eightfold path of Buddhism. That's like essentially what that does. It says like, hey, this is a code of conduct that if you follow it, you'll be a very good person. Mm. Right. Um, you know, all the religions, they do very, very similar. But I think it's important for men to sort that out on their own. What you're asking about is, is yeah, I'm aware of this narrative of there being a, uh, uh, a call for men to be cooperative, to become part of the collective. And I see that as becoming part of the Borg. And I mean, part of once the you Borg. become part of the Borg, you no longer are making decisions on your own. You are following uh, prescribed uh, notions. And it's almost like on a day to day, these things are being formulated like shooting from the hip uh, socially. And th- that's a problem. Um, and it also arises a problem when guys find themselves in these situations and then they, they are uh, their, their natural inclination to lead then becomes a, a problem. And they're, and they're saying, well, you know, I got here through cooperation, but part of them intrinsically wants to, wants to, to express themselves as a man. And that coming into the Borg is being, is said to be bad. It's shunned. It's, uh, you know, guilted and all sorts of things shamed. And, uh, and they say, okay, well, I want to be accepted here. I want to be acceptable. I don't want to be ignored. So I'm going to follow the rules, but in doing so you're, you're, you're performing, um, some sort of treachery on yourself Mm. and you can, and men can feel that. And then it comes out in frustration or they hold it inside and, you know, all kinds of wacky things happen on the lady's side. They feel that as well. 
and they're like, "Ugh, that guy's not a dude. I can like walk all over him." Yeah, but watch. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, what do you think will function appropriately in this environment? Given that, like, a lot of like we have to live in a community that is built where it's an ecosystem. Yes. Right. And there's a lot of advancements and, and, and uh, um, luxuries that both men and women take advantage of by operating in this system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the most desirable um, version of yourself is to be, I don't know, this person that can do whatever you want marching to the beat of your own drum. Do you feel as though that will contradict the very social constructs that make our environment function the way that it does? So if we just narrow it down to, let's say like marriage, right? It, it depends. It depends on the man. Right. So, but, because if somebody has strong values for other people, strong values about family, right. like those are the guys that are going to make a difference. Right. They're going to make a difference in their own way. And then the guys that don't, follow that path are going to make a difference in their other way. Right. But you mentioned something mm -hmm. to me outside of this, uh, um, conversation where you mentioned are men today equipped for marriage. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you answer that question? If part of marriage is a social construct that steers men away from what, I guess what you would describe as their most potent selves. Right. No, not necessarily. You can be a very potent self and very, very authentic uh, and still want a family because if that's part of your core values as a man is, is spreading your genealogy, spreading your thumbprint, spreading your last name and honoring that, then that, and that's part of your principles, then you're going to be the type of dude who's going to be creating these things. But can you create that family life structure under your own rules or do you have to follow the rules of marriage laws or relationship expectations or you know it depends on how you want to roll with it right, right. so if you're if you're in a state that has a common law marriage well then you're going to be subjected to that if you choose to get legally married you're then hopefully going to be smart about it do your research and understand what that means as far as what you can and can't do mm. uh, and what responsibilities are entailed to that there are other people who who get married or stay together and choose to create families that are not technically legally married. Mm. And I'm of the viewpoint that it really doesn't matter. It really matters is the connection between the two people, right? Because obviously, again, like what we were talking about before with like the, uh, the labels, the traditional man, and, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to create this label to kind of uh, take the place of who, what I should be creating from inside. Mm. And I'm going to rely on this structure to dictate behaviors of everyone involved. Mm. And I feel that a lot of people treat marriage that way as well. Mm. When really marriage comes to, comes down to the connection between the two people, mm. how that works synergistically, mm. right? Because without that, it doesn't matter what structure you have, obviously, because there's tons of people getting divorces, Right. Well, actually, I think the divorce rate is, is is dropping nowadays, but that's for different reasons. Um, but but let's but, talk about that for a yeah, second. You, so you sure. you've you've been married before. Yes. Do you see yourself getting married again? Um, legally speaking, no, no. I, I no longer have any desire to have the state involved in my romantic life. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, so this is this is an example of a man, you know, following his own path and going his own way however you know right and I'm, but i'm not opposed to long-term committed relationships I, right i understand that right but yeah. a I'm lot not saying of, i want to be a player out here for the rest of my days like I, <laughs> that's i completely understand and 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 i respect yeah. that I, i'm of a similar mindset however mm -hmm. that's got to raise some challenges in who you communicate with who you communicate with yeah like explain that. To what me. do you mean? Because like, if, say you come across a woman who is interested in that state marriage. Is that what you mean? That or just socially in conversations or socially in like, you know, expect like, you know, you might, you might get invited to, you know, a, a gathering where that's a, that's a conversation or you're at a wedding or whatever. And you're, mm -hmm. you're, you have to be honest about your opinions on what's going on. And, 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 well, you don't have to be outright and tell people about it, but it's like, if somebody asks you, 
you're going to answer them honestly as a man. You're not going to tiptoe around it, but you're also not going to purposely try to offend people. Got it. And uh, and that's just who you are. Like, it, why would you hide what you are for the sake of you know appealing to somebody else's uh, own set of perceptions of reality? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Have you ever scared off a woman who is very attracted to you, and you're attracted to, to them, but the fact that you don't want to no. get married again, like, freaks them no. out? No, they've not been freaked out, but they have thought that, ooh, this box is going to change his mind or I'm going to be able to sway him. And, and I'm like, you know, like months will go by and, uh, and the, like it comes up and I was like, I told you who I am. So that I told so you what happens once that, that tiff comes up. Well, it wasn't a tiff, it was, you know, discussion, but um, she never left. <laughs> okay. Because of how she felt, because again, it's just titles, structures, and things like that. That pales in comparison to how a woman feels, right? Mm. That the like if it, when it's a powerful feeling, and it's it's coupled with with a connection, being like, wow, I haven't felt like this before with any other dude that I've been with in the past. That is way more powerful than some sort of dream. So right. So so let's talk about like how a woman feels, right? Because there's been this constant yeah. conversation about like, okay, so in traditional relationships, you know, the man earns the money and the woman is like the submissive person in that relationship to this guy mm -hmm. who makes this money. Do you feel that it is a challenge for both men and women to have the dynamic of masculinity versus femininity in an instance where a woman is making extremely uh more than the man mm, i didn't quite catch your question so do you find rephrase that do you find that there's a challenge between oh where men where women make more money yes only for men who don't have a square to stand on okay so let's say you got a guy who's got a square to stand on mm -hmm. yes right and a woman's making significantly more than him mm -hmm. even if he's completely secure in himself do you right. find that women will be uh, accepting of that scenario, regardless of how square that guy is? It it really just depends on how he is able to make her feel, right? Mm. It's it, it it really comes down to like a lot of small factors that happen psychologically and emotionally, and if it's like, no matter how much money a man makes. A woman can sniff out a chump, that, and that's it. It doesn't matter. But sometimes they sometimes they they call somebody a chump because of how much that person makes. If that's the first thing they know about them, um, it, it very very well could be. Yeah, but we're talking about like uh, you know, people who are romantically interested in one another, right? Because really, your the your ability to to translate those feelings mm. okay happen when you say hello yeah right it happens when you say hello and frankly i don't think that anyone man or woman should be what do they call that pocket watching uh at all in the very beginning because it's irrelevant well you whether right? you say that whether they you know you don't think they should but that stuff happens so frequently right, especially but, especially when we're in an environment where we're curating our our uh, you know options through these digital platforms such as dating apps mm -hmm. or social media or whatever, and well, you, if you're a guy who's answering that question so soon, then then you're a fool. What do you mean? What do you mean? You, <laughs> guy who's you, got, answer, you have no game. You don't understand how things really work. What do you mean? A guy answering those questions. What do you mean? So like uh, you go out on a first date and she says, you know, um, I, I have not heard a woman say how much money. No, you can make, that's but not. They'll, that's but not, they'll, that, they'll ask, what do you do? You know, Be, what do you before say? you even, before gonna... even get to that, mm -hmm. you're the a lot of these platforms are asking you to to put your occupation, yeah, you know, put your your uh, um uh um some of them ask for salary ranges like some of some, yeah some, I've seen that right I've seen that right they may not list it on the thing but somebody but a, a mm -hmm. woman can filter based on that right yes yes i've seen that right i've seen that so mm -hmm. so and even if you choose not to disclose you might not even get a chance to express your 
the, your personality before you're already filtered out by not having I that information. See you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So, yep. so my thing is like, how do you circumvent that? And how do you, even if you're somebody like in this modern environment, even if you're a guy mm-hmm. that's standing in your square, you're still dealing with what is being presented to the women before you even show up in the room. Right. So you're talking about apps, right? Dating apps. Whether it's apps or whether the thing that we talk Because I would say just don't bother with using those apps. I got There's plenty of them out there. I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. But even if you yeah. take the apps out of the question we mentioned earlier, there's the, the, the social uh, desire to want to have means, right? Of course. There's a social pressure to have like comfort and access to mm-hmm. things. So even if yes. you're a man that's in your square and you're so on and so forth, mm-hmm. a lot of times women, even if they're making a certain amount of money and they're with a really masculine guy, she is going to feel the pressure to want to like relieve herself of those responsibilities of being the one that flies you out as a guy, right? Because she's going to maintain her certain lifestyle, right? She's going to want to go to Dubai with her money. She's going to want to do all those things. And if you can't provide that for her, you can be the most masculine dude uh, that that you want to be. Is that masculinity now tarnished by she's the one paying your way to make, to keep up with her lifestyle? No, not at all. Okay. So how do you explain no. that to women? Like, have, because that's right, a struggle. I'll, I'll make it I think a, a lot of women have. A small, right. Yeah. Right, because a lot of men struggle with themselves. Okay. Right. Like money is not the issue. It's who people are is the issue. Okay. Have you ever had, I'm sure you have, but I'll ask, have you ever had a woman buy you something? Of course. All the time. Like something really nice. Of course I have. Right. Like, I have. like yeah. I've had my, my TV was purchased by a woman that I was seeing. Okay. Right. Like I've had shoes, yep. clothes, jewelry. Yeah. Okay. If that can happen on a micro, because I mean, like I would consider that micro, it can absolutely happen on a macro. Uh, it depends because. Because, because what is behind it? It's, it's what a person is inspired to do. It depends. I think the things that are purchased privately, it can work. But I mm-hmm. think it's the public pressure. When a woman goes out on a date with a guy, if she wants to go to a nice restaurant that she's accustomed to based on the budget that she afforded herself, if right. she's seeing mm-hmm. a guy, regardless of how masculine he is, if she still wants to experience the lifestyle she's accustomed to, if she mm-hmm. makes it significantly more than him, she's going to have to flip that bill. And yeah. it might affect her psychologically if socially she has to be the one to pay for that experience. The only way uh, I got you, I you got see you. What I'm saying, yes. And what that shows is that the voice from outside has more impression on her than his voice. And that's my point. And the voice. So out- how does how did? Do, but how does? So you say is? Are you suggesting that it's impossible? I'm not for saying it's impossible. I'm saying no, that it's entirely possible. That's the funny. I'm thing. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that it creates a challenge. Yes, that it is challenging. It, that is, I call it an unnecessary challenge because it's like you know you should be with the person based on the person. But there's this social pressure that is growing where mm-hmm. the things that you want intrinsically and physio- physiologically is constantly in battle with what you want and need socially. So we're mm-hmm. constantly in a duality of what we naturally want and what we are supposed to want. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I hear you completely. Yeah. And it's what I'm suggesting is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I do what I do. Yeah. It's, it's something that takes upwards of six months of hard training of like, really hard psychological stuff yeah. of dealing with inside a man to deal with himself, to deal with women, to deal with the voice of society. Cause that's what you've been conditioned with your whole life coming up through without your choice. Like you didn't choose or ask for any of that. They were just like, as you're growing up, they just kind of squeezed it into your psyche. Yeah. Right. And now we have to kind of expunge it. 
Yeah. So that you do have influence over yourself and you're able to have influence over the woman who's interested in you. Yeah. And when you're in those places and that influence is strong, the outside voices and worlds disappear. Mm. They, the, it becomes like a muffled tone, like, like Charlie Brown's teacher. Right. And you have a wah, 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 wah. All she hears is what you are saying. Mm. Right. And it doesn't matter if she's a lawyer. Right. It's be, it's like, yeah, she gets her paycheck from him. OK, but because of who you are, because of how you relate with yourself, because of how you relate with her and, it, and its impact. That that guy is just the dude who cuts the check. That's no, it. I, I agree with you. A thousand percent. And I think the challenge in today's environment mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily come from your ability to display yourself when you're in front of your woman as this masculine man who can um, add that kind of value and influence to your woman, I think mm-hmm. it, the challenge comes when you might not even have that opportunity because of how people filter their options in today's environment. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot to position yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you if you make a certain amount of money, that is only going to allow you access to certain portions of society. Yes. Right. And there is there is wisdom in dating. Well, in your well, depends, well, the, the, well, you know that depends. Uh, there, you, there is some, but does that mean you're you're only able to do that? No, of course not. You're just going to have to be clever. You're going to have to work hard if you want to get out of your lane. Sure, mm. like it, it, it's not like I mean, there's I mean, we're in New York, right? There's there's places where there is events going on, and to get a plate at this thing, it's going to cost you five grand. Facts. To get a plate at these events. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know about these, like they happen all the time, right? Like charity things. And it's like, Hey, anybody can come if you're going to drop five G's to get a plate. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, do you want access to that? Is that your lane right now? Maybe that's not your lane right now, but it doesn't mean it can't be. No. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, there's, there's multiple ways to kind of, if that's a desire of yours, which I don't know like why, but who knows <laughs> what guys want all kinds of things, but it's like, if that's what you want, there's certainly ways to position yourself to get the things that you want. It's not just a matter of like, oh man, I got to get a better job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause that's not really going to solve your problems. Yeah. It might, but like, it might give you access. <laughs> it might give you access, but once you have access, then it still comes down to who you are. Absolutely, it Abs- always abs- comes back. To absolutely, that. but unfortunately, mm-hmm. some, the people with some of the best character don't get the spotlight. That's just sad, sad truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's true. But it, but it's not about the uh, it's not about the spotlight. No, you know spotlight what I'm meaning yeah. spotlight meaning like the ability to make a difference in the people. The the, the bill, there's a guy right now who probably doesn't make a lot of money, but has the best character for a woman who makes a tremendous amount of money and they would be a, yeah. a good fit for each other. But because of the right. money gap, they might not mm-hmm. ever see each other. It's, Maybe. I mean, it just depends on where you live. I, I mean, it's like, it, it's not absolute. We're in New York. It's like, there's a lot of cross it's, it's not envi- it's, environments. It's, it's not absolute. I've, I've yeah. heard a lot of women say that, I've heard a lot of women say this, okay? Mm. They'll say they dated a guy far too far for far too long of a time because he was either really tall or really wealthy. Yeah. So they overexerted yeah. themselves in relationships that were potentially toxic, unhealthy, or just not fruitful, but purely sure. because of the things that they think will bring them value and they try to ignore all the other stuff because like I can't find a guy who makes this kind of money so I'm going to stick around I can't find a a, a guy who makes who's this tall so I'm going to stick around so that's why I'm trying to tell you it's like they can see those guys with the money first they can see the guy who who looks a certain way who's tall or whatever first Mm -hmm. and the guy that can add value to them is regardless of how great his character is is being trumped Mm -hmm. by the surface level attributes of the other things sure i mean that's nature yeah you know what i'm saying it's like that is nature there are things that are attractive yeah we see it in all areas of life from plants to fish to bugs to birds to you know all the way through 
every species on this planet. Yeah. That's just life. Yeah. You know, there's attractive things that we do to create attraction, yeah. right? That create interest, yeah. right? But there's there's levels to it. Like, and so, but guys don't understand the dynamic because they have little experience, yeah. unfortunately. And they are stuck on the on that level. They're stuck in that first level. They're like, man, I just got to get attention for women. So I need to do this. I need to do that just so they're looking, right? And it's like, well, okay, you're going to spend a lot of time doing that. What are you going to do when she's when she's there? Mm. You know, all right, she's standing in front of you. What what are you going to do? Mm. Right? What are you going to say <laughs> <laughs> to make her? Because you got one shot before she turn, you know, turns and walks the other way. Like, hey, guys, it's just a, a rich chump. He's such a good looking chump. He's... You know, he has whatever, but he's still a chump. Uh, you know? Listen, you and I are on the same page, unfortunately, is a struggle for a lot of people regardless. But speaking of struggles yeah. for a lot of yes. people, um, I received a few questions or quite a bit of questions um, from my listeners or from previous guests that they want the next guest to answer. Uh, okay, let's hit it. Um, you got some time to answer a couple questions? Yeah, right. yeah. We'll do, we'll do two. Here's the first one. All right. Is it true that men aren't really your friends, um, platonic friends? I have multiple guy friends, and some people say to me that they just want to sleep with you. Like, men never really want to be friends with you. They want to sleep with you, and they're looking for an opportunity. So being a friend is just an opportunity for them to hopefully sleep with you one day. So I'm just curious if that's really a thing or. What do you think about mm. that? There's, there's three levels to it. All right. One is your common average level to what she's speaking to. So your, your average guy who is afraid of women, he's got no game. He's not honest with himself. Therefore he's not honest with women. He's afraid to say, Hey, I am sexually interested in you. Right. I want to get to know you in an intimate way there, or I'm attracted to you. I want to get to know you in an intimate way uh, in one way or another. He's not afraid of expressing himself to her. Honestly, that is a vast majority of men so that they, and they will just be friends and not really put that forward in the hopes of having an opportunity. And they're always putting it off. Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, they'll tell their friends, I'm just waiting for the right time. And you know, it's, it's, <laughs> They dance around the bush and they just stay there like indefinitely because they're scared. So that's one group. All right. Um, the the other way that, that it actually can be genuine is if there's no sexual interest whatsoever. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Right. I, I, I've got a uh, my best female friend of over 20 years. I have no sexual interest in her. Um, and we were lovers back when we were teenagers. Okay, like we first met. Wait right? a minute, but that, how does mm -hmm. that count? Because what do you mean? At some point, you were attracted, to her, regardless if you were a teenager or not. Well, yeah, I mean, but I was like eighteen. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm we. And, That's but, still dangerous. But the thing is, is that we went through various levels of of dynamics, going back and forth, uh, to thoughts, feelings, and actions. And just over the years, developed a very strong relationship. I got you, but if you was, if you had never, you know, if you never, you know, were attracted to her when you were a teenager, if you had never, because I assume you guys slept together. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine if you didn't sleep with this person before, there probably still would be that level of curiosity today. Right, but uh, like to to the point of being honest, the first one, it's like I would tell my younger self. Be honest with her, right? Because that's be honest with her. When I had first met, I mean, because like I was in Italy, it was like you know, study abroad program, like that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, I see this attractive girl, and like, of course, like yeah. you know, you're traveling, you have fun doing this thing. Of course, the first thing is I wanted to sleep with her, right? Uh, but that's my um, point. But I don't think you can use that example because because you already well, slept it's with just, her. It's just in this in sense that that it's just an example in my own life where you can have friendship that exists I, as long as there's no right i have other female friends yeah, but that, example, that i would call hang on that i don't i don't hang out with yeah but, hang, but they are no, no go ahead go hang ahead. on to that example right yeah yeah you yeah. 
use the example of someone you already slept with that you became friends with afterwards. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of men can become friends with women post nut clarity. Oh yeah. Yeah. I agree. So I agree. So if you haven't slept with that guy yet, so then there's four. Okay. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, like yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. We just modify. There's four, <laughs> right? You can, you can have, you can develop a friendship. After and you sleep with a guy. <laughs> people are, provided both people are willing to create that. You know what I mean? Because we were able to create that because we we're both willing on, on that yeah, part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so probably both people are willing to have a friendship after having sex. Sure. Like that's totally possible. So let's take that out of the realm. Next we're talking about is, the ones where you haven't. Then the, Right. Then the other thing is that there can't be sexual interest. Yeah. Right. You absolutely can have friends or be friends with a woman that you're not sexually attracted to. Yes. All right. And then the last one is where I think it comes more when you're older and you're not, you're no longer prioritizing sex. And now you're looking at like, well, uh, can this per person bring value into my life? Much like you would look at friendships between men. Right. Like I don't have friendships with men that I find are just like useless losers, bumps on a log. They just like, you know, hang out and like drink beer and play video games all day. Like that's I'm not going to bring somebody like that into my life because they don't provide any value for me. And it'd be very difficult for me to provide value for them. So um, I think that same sort of mindset when you mature out of prioritizing sex you can have those relationships with women. Mm. Um, the funny part is, and this is, this is the funny part, when you get to that sort of level and understanding, when you stop doing that, it actually turns you into more of an attractive person. <laughs> That's because they're like, wait a second, all these other guys are after my ass. Why isn't he after my ass? And they're like, look at my ass, come after my ass. And you're like, no, really, I'm not after you like that. Just chill out. Um, you know, like, uh, can you suggest like some good restaurants to go to or like, you know, what's a fun thing to do in this city or whatever? You know what I'm saying? It's interesting because, well, th I think there's another element that you didn't mention that I would say mm -hmm. comes into play. Sure. I think even if you're like an attractive person, right, or, you know, and you haven't slept with that person, there's this other element of like, if you have been or are in a relationship with someone that I know. So you're talking like code. Co <laughs> yeah. Well, cause, cause something happens in my mind, right? So when my friends mm -hmm. are in relationships with certain women, right. Or they're married to them or, or whatever. My brain says these women are your sisters. Mm -hmm. Right. So it completely removes any type of attraction for a lot of reasons because it's like you are it removes a tra it, it, it removes attraction it, it, for me because because now so so the like you don't even look like so she you're you're at a barbecue and you know that friend who's got your buddies you know that's a girlfriend mm -hmm. and she's wearing something real good and she turns around to go fix him a plate mm -hmm. you're not looking at her ass not I, even a I, I'm, I'm not because for some reason in my mind in my mind it's almost like you're like no, no yeah it's it's almost embarrassing if she's being extra provocative because it's like you're oh no not being extra provocative no, just happens to be wearing something nice whether it's something nice or not but i imagine that what you're talking about is nice is pr it's provoking it's provocative right to the average right, person so right. i'm not saying she's being provocative yeah. but if you're right, saying right. like like i have family members who are attractive right mm -hmm. i don't you know I, for obvious reasons i don't find them attractive but the same way you become like a like a like a sister to me right so yeah. so i yeah, so i could see so that. i'll, I see so I'll say this in another way like i have mm -hmm. i have uh um um like i'm haitian right mm -hmm. i've only dated maybe one or two haitians in my life right and i realized like i'm not attracted to haitian women as much as I guess the average Haitian man, because the way my mind works is that person is way too familiar. They seem like a sister or a sibling, right? My ex-girlfriend who was Asian, she says she doesn't date Asian men because she says she feels like she's dating her brother. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm in a presence of a woman that I've hung out with in very plutonic ways and, and they're interactive with my guy friends or another 
you know, family member that they're dating or they're or, or they're in a relationship with or or they're married to, my brain mm-hmm. just turns into like like you've been normalized in my life as now a family member. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I think that's very similar to to the last example I gave. It's 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 when you're just in a mindset yeah. and sex just becomes like a uh, less of a priority. It's, like it's not even there really as a motivating factor. Right. Uh, as a point of consideration. Right. And I yeah, so I I think just and then that's just a dynamic where that shows up. Right. And the and the other yeah. and the the other aspect to think about is like when a woman asks a question like, are my guy friends really my guy friends? My question to them is, are you willing to accept that they do not find you attractive? (laughs) You know what I mean? Because if you're willing to accept that. Well, they might not. What do you mean? I think you said, are you willing to accept that they are not? Well, maybe I misheard you. I'm saying, is that woman willing to accept that the guys that she's hanging out with do not find them attractive? Well, they might not. They might. They might be attracted to her and not being honest. I know, but I'm or saying, they, or they might have not have any. Like, and she is she willing to be okay with with that if they are not attracted to her? Yes, I think. Yeah. I think for you to be friends with a woman, you almost have to be repulsed by her sexually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being it, it, it can't be just a zero it has to go to the negative yeah because the thing is like <laughs> you have to look at it like because because i used to listen to this podcast in the past where the guy's like the true test is you know go up to your guy friend and say i want to have sex and just like start taking your clothes off and see what he does if he's like oh man i've been waiting for this for a long time then that was <laughs> your friend right and if he's like but if he's like hesitant he's like oh i mean I, uh, uh, that's also not your friend but if he's like put your what are you doing put your clothes like you're being yeah. weird that's your friend yeah. you see what yeah. i'm saying so like if you're trying to figure out if your guy friend is actually your friend you mm-hmm. have to be with guys that are repulsed by you in some way before you can say that there's no sexual uh um, chemistry in there now can you be friends with women that you are attracted to Yes, but you have to be open with the fact that this is not a pure friendship. Well, the, well, there's also different types of attraction, right? Like there's 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 physical attraction, sure. right? Where you can you can look at somebody and just their form, their 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 proportions, how their the skin looks, their hair, whatever, what they're wearing, and and appreciate that much in the same way you're looking at um, you know a beautiful painting or a sculpture. Just like you can recognize great aesthetics, yeah. right? But does that necessarily translate into being sexually attracted to somebody, right? Because I'm sure, I mean, I've been in this position where I've been visually attracted to a person, but then I interact with them and I'm sexually repulsed. Like I, I'm not sexually aroused just think, by how somebody but I th- looks. But I think that's that's where the question lies from this woman who's asking the question or anybody asking the question is like, can mm-hmm. you be friends with a guy? Is it safe to be friends with a guy in the sense of like, or is he just trying to have sex with you? Right? I, I, I think more often than not, there's going to be those friends that want to smash, but they're just too much of a coward to really put it out there. I just think that's a very common thing I, I, because I'm just saying with the number of guys that I deal with who have issues, just being honest with women about their intentions, uh, even just strictly from a dating perspective, yeah. right? Like the, you translate that into these so-called friendships. And I'm guessing that that's going to be a high, high number, the, the high proportion of men in these like friends with their, you know, girl buddies situation, especially the younger you go, Oof. right? High school. That's like, that's like basically like the, the, the MO for high school. <laughs> uh, a lot of high school, you know, you were talking about kids. They don't know themselves. They're just trying to figure stuff out. They're just getting into their puberty and hormones. So I'm not even going to count them into the conversation. Let's get to the second question. Got it. Let's go. Were this, if the entire world could hear and understand you, what would you want to say to everyone? Your eyes bugged out. The, in, <laughs> the entire world. Yeah. Damn. Uh, well, 
I would just say to seek the self. Mm. That's where most of our problems lie. That's where a lot of our suffering is. That's where a lot of our savior is. So I would say that largely the truths that we need, we already have inside us. It's just learning how to access it and be comfortable with that honesty. So the message is would be to, to seek the self. That is absolutely where pretty much, I would say like 90% of your problems are. There's, there's a word for that. Hmm. Be introspective. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, good one. Th- that that's a good message. I think, I think the message I would say to the world is that we are individuals that have more similarities than we think. Okay, a lot of times people, you know, live in their own bubble and they they have challenges that are very unique to their environment but we have the capability to relate to each other in more ways than people actually will, are willing to accept mm-hmm. so that would be my message to the world just be open minded with how much you can relate to people that are so far away from you that there's a lot of missed opportunities in that sense. Here, I'll, I'll combine them, right? What's the best way of realizing that we're not all that different? By understanding the self first, right? Because you realize, oh man, a lot of my suffering, other people are dealing with the same suffering when you get way deep down and not from the details of, of life, yeah, yeah, like yeah. particularities, the real, like the core stuff that we, that a lot of us just carry around with us, right? That's, that's the relatable portion. So once you realize that of yourself, you look at thousands of people and at their core, they're dealing with the same thing. We're not so far off from each other Yes, is when we go up into the details and we get distracted yeah. by, you know, economy and yeah. race and gender and all these things. It's like, Oh, well, we're so different. It's like, nah, not, not really. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think what you said is smart. I think it starts with self. It definitely starts with self, but you have yeah. to expand out of yourself to see, to compare how other people self compare to you on a very intrinsic level, not on a surface level, like, you know, height, money, you know, looks at like, I'm talking about like actual, you know, behavior and emotional and like identity, you know, how we yes. relate that way is, I think is far more similar than what a lot of people. Um, right. And once you're able to understand that and be able to make those connections, yeah. right. Cause then you, then you, uh, once you have the understanding, then you can really start making connections. Mm. Now imagine how that translates to dealing with women. Mm. That's what I was talking about in the very beginning. Mm. Right. It's like if you're speaking to her once on the surface stuff where we all appear different, you're missing the game. Yeah. You're getting pulled into nonsense. Yeah. Right. If you can talk to her at that core level, yeah. which does require a certain skill that begins with knowing who you are. Yeah. 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 Right. And then understanding that other people are in similar places. You learn how to communicate on that level. It becomes extremely impactful. Mm. And it doesn't matter if she's making three times your salary at that point. No, listen, I agree with you a thousand percent. And as you said, also is, is not easy <laughs> No, for a lot not. of men. You know? it, it, no, it is not easy. It's not something you can buy your way into or, or schmooze your way into or force your way into. I don't care how aggressive you are, how much muscles you have. You cannot get to there. Uh, in any other way, but to become vulnerable to yourself and learning how to communicate to yourself. It just, there's no other way around it. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Um, Do you have any questions that you want the next guest to answer? Well, I don't know what guest you've got. doesn't matter. (laughs) Just think of anything that you think is like, is constantly being asked either in your DMs or things that you've been pondering about, whether it's like social issues, relationship stuff, or just general things. Have you seen some examples? Uh, well, you know, I'm pretty pretty self absorbed. I don't really think about what other people are thinking about. <laughs> I mean, I'm this just being guy, honest here. This guy, I'm just being honest here. 
you know, like if I really don't have a, a like a quandary about like what other you know, forget it, like a what give me, woman's give, thinking about. Give me, give me a question. Whether- ask, ask her, ask her what he thinks. Ask her what, what she thinks about when she's alone and being intimate with herself. Wait, what? <laughs> ask her what she thinks about when she is alone and being intimate with herself. I might be able to. Okay, actually ask the question. Okay, like if I was with a female guest, what do you think about when you are alone and being intimate with yourself? Okay, we'll call that question right? number one. I'll have to yeah. ver- cater that to a specific guest. Uh, right. I have certain guests that I can definitely it, ask. It's, that it's, re- it's, it's related to guys who think that the best way to turn a woman, woman on is by having a lot of external assets. And I'm telling you that she doesn't think about those external assets when she's alone and being intimate with herself. I got you. Um, mm-hmm. Give me another question. It doesn't have to be something that you need an answer on. Maybe, maybe you'd be curious to see how somebody else answers the question. Oh, um, hmm. Well, I mean, it could relate to back to what we were just talking about is, you know, what do you think is the uh, one of the best ways to make an impactful connection with another person? That is regardless a, of gender. That's a beautiful. You have no idea how beautiful that question is. That's a good question, bro. <laughs> That's like a really good one. I'm I'm gonna go to a home run with that one. Do um, you have a third one? No, no. I'm I'm sticking it there. I got one for the got gutter it. and then one for the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. Um, give people an idea of how to reach you, how they can get in touch with you, or what kind of programs you got going on. They take they can take advantage of. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, like it was just great to be back on the show here with you, Jeff. It's it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my stuff is pretty easy to find. I just keep it all localized on Instagram and that's coach Justin underscore AE. The AE is short for the alpha evolution, which is the program that I coach men through. Uh, I do have all of my coaching that's put in, into videos over 20 hours worth of video work, uh, with different categories ranging from your belief structure to, uh, you know, dealing with social conditioning to learning how to get in touch with yourself, building that internal structure, and then how to express your erotic self, uh, in a very comfortable and genuine way without being creepy. Um, and then I also have that sort of stuff with a one-on-one coaching, which is a lot more involved, uh, and that sort of thing is a lot of work, but you know, <laughs> there's, 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 a, it's got proven results. Um, and then I also do like just a la carte stuff. So people can contact me through the, the link in my bio on Instagram. And if they've got just a simple problem or they want to talk for an hour, we could just do a la carte sort of, um, coaching. Um, and then just, you know, a little bit of news, like I'm going to be coming out with like some workshops, um, a membership and, uh, hopefully in June it's slated that the, it's going to be a membership, like a monthly membership where, uh, only for men who are in relationships or preferably married who kind of want to take their sex lives to another level. And, uh, and that's where I teach some really deep, dark sort of stuff. I mean, you could call it black magic, but it's not safe for men to be operating this way out in the dating market. It can cause a lot of psychological or emotional damage. It's only really, (laughs) no, I'm serious. It's really only suited for men who are in deeply committed relationships um, because it creates such a substantial bond uh, psychologically from the woman to the man that, um, it shouldn't be used in any other context outside of a marriage or like a very, very committed relationship. Um, you know, like, so you can't be like this if you're out here, just kind of like moving around on, you know, on the streets. AKA, like you're you're, you're going to yeah, need to sign yeah. a waiver. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, no. So, you know, no, I'm no, I'm ethical about this. So I don't teach the black magic to just anybody. Um, but yeah, the, it's going to be a membership program for men who are married or in, uh, in deeply committed long-term relationships to take their sexuality into a completely different direction. Um, that just creates a deeper and deeper, more impactful bond between the two people. Um, and it, it's really creative. Uh, and you know, there's really nothing like that out here that I know of so far. So I think it's going to be a great program. Um, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, it's just like, 
book stuff, <laughs> you know, all kinds of little things, but it can all be found through the bio and my, my Instagram uh, profile. Right on. Um, mm. My name is uh, Jeff Demise. You can find me at J.D.A.M.I.S.S.E. on IG or um, Clubhouse or J underscore D.A.M.I.S.S.E. for um, Twitter. For the podcast, it's introspect underscore club. That's everywhere on, you know, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, IG, Clubhouse, Twitter, um, you name it. Um, If you have any questions you want answered on the show, similar to how we did it today, shoot me a DM and I will get it answered on the show. You can either shoot, send me video, audio, or anything like that. Um, If you are a unique individual or know someone who's a unique individual that has an interesting life or has a unique experience that other people can learn from, reach out to me. I might be able to get you on the show. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate when you guys do that. It helps us get to the next level of contributing to people who want to listen to this show. Um, make sure you like, subscribe. Make sure you put you know your thoughts into the comments as well as uh, you rate your rate and review us on um, the audio podcast as well. Justin, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I appreciate the conversation today. You're welcome, and I appreciate you having me again. It's been great. Until next time, man. Mm-hmm. Later.